Let's talk a little about the screwball. This is a pitch that I've really gotten away from as I've learned more and more about internal rotation, biomechanics, movement, spin, late break. The more I learn, the more this pitch doesn't make sense, at least in its traditional form. And I'll talk about what that means. First, let's talk about what the screwball actually is and what it's supposed to do in theory. So I'm a right-handed pitcher. If I'm throwing to a right-handed batter, the screwball is a horizontal pitch uh, that breaks horizontally into the batter. Or if I'm throwing to a lefty and I'm a right-handed pitcher, it would break away from the lefty. So in a sense, the screwball is supposed to simulate what a lefty curve might look like. But now let's talk about the spin and what you generally see and what I see a lot of girls when, I, when they come into me and they say, I throw a screwball and I'm like, okay, what is the spin supposed to look like on this pitch? A lot of them don't know because a lot of girls just were never taught to read spin and that's a very important piece of pitching and softball in general, I think. Um, and then when they do try to explain it to me, they say, well, I'm, I'm supposed to release the ball and it comes in spinning this way, so then it breaks that way but here's the deal if my if this ball is spinning quickly right and I release it right-handed pitcher like this that ball comes in spinning like that it's a bullet that's spinning towards a right-handed batter right a bullet spin pitch or a corkscrew spin however you want to call it it doesn't break when Rapsodo, that's the machine and equipment that I use to break down movement spin. It's amazing. There's so much data on that thing. It's crazy. I'll put a link down in our description for this. When you throw a pitch with a bullet spin on Rapsodo, it says it's 0% efficient with its spin, meaning all of the spin in a bullet, a true bullet spin pitch, does not contribute to any movement on that pitch. So that pitch is straight in. Okay? So when I have girls that throw screwballs on the Rapsodo, if we do get a percentage of spin efficiency, it's because this spin might accidentally move this way. So that ball, the, the axis of the spin might just fall in. And now my spin is closer to what a rise might be and it might go up, right? This, this spin, true spin right here, this is a true rise spin, that's 100% efficient, 0%. So we might be trying to throw a screwball, and oftentimes I see when it's effective, it's usually a mistake that the pitcher has thrown. In a good way, we get away with a lot of stuff, but that access will turn, and it turns into a rise, or it turns this way, and now we're getting more of a drop on it. So that actual curve and late break, in order to throw that, true we would have to throw a lefty curveball spin like this and i've never seen it i've never seen it if i have seen it maybe it's like one time and it's close and it's very hard for any pitcher to recreate that i've consulted with people around the country about this pitch it just doesn't break okay not when it's thrown in the traditional sense that a lot of people think they're doing right and they think it's effective, but here's the thing, a fastball, a hard fastball that tails inside, that can be really effective, absolutely. I'm down for that, that's great. But if it's just that, let's throw it in a safe way. So now let's get into the mechanics of the screwball. And this is probably one thing I hate <laughs> about this pitch. When I get young kids that come in and say, they have a natural screwball or screwball is their favorite pitch. After a while, we get to talk in and they understand where I'm coming from with this. My job is to develop young pitchers the best I can to be the most efficient and the safest on, the safest on their bodies so that they can continue pitching well into their 30s, 40s, 50s, if they want to, if they choose to. You should be able to if you take care of your body and you practice appropriate safe mechanics. Now, 
Most people, if you go out at the ballparks and look at screwballs, this is how they're throwing them, right? So they're probably throwing them with like similar to a curveball type grip. And if you ask them how they release it, they'll get down in as close to the hip as they can and they'll try to come around the ball this way, right? So that elbow's coming in like this. When you get to be 16U, maybe 14U, 18U into college, and you're throwing in the 60s, close to it, 65 plus, and you're throwing reps on your body like this, you know what starts to hurt? Right here, right here. I have seen girls have to have surgery. Um, nerve damage in this elbow area hurts all the time and hurts the most when they throw the screwball. Now we know from internal rotation, the rotational style of pitching, that our arm, our shoulder, likes to move glove side like this to slow down naturally, right? Our curveball, glove side. Even our rise ball, when we finish that, if we finish it correctly, glove side. The screwball is a pitch, that traditional way of throwing the screwball, that your throwing arm moves, throwing arm side. And some pitchers go, way throwing arm side with it only to produce a fastball that is tailing in okay and sometimes that tail can be a little sharper and it can make us think that oh man the break on that is so sharp it's not breaking it's not late break not like a curveball okay it's a tail that comes in on on hitters and yeah I can jam them up but that's what we're producing and we're going through all of this and potential injury for that and here's my other thing about it Okay, this is the only pitch that goes against the natural way the body likes to move. And so if you watch, if you put a radar on a pitcher who mixes in some screwballs, um, you know, throws one or two every hitter roughly, or just throws it pretty consistently, it's in the mix, right? Their stuff, their other stuff, is not going to be as fast as it could be. If you take that screwball out, work a little bit and have everything everything we throw is moving naturally with our body right we're throwing a couple miles an hour faster now that's that's what you guys will have to decide is a couple miles an hour faster worth it for me it's not a huge difference but it, it's something to build off of the safety for me is what matters um i've just i've seen too many injuries for a pitch that we can throw way safer in other ways one other thing about screwball that is difficult, right? So those, the natural screwballs, or my young pitchers that we get that say, I learned screwball as my first movement pitch, I'm just like, oh no. It goes against your natural, natural way of moving is according to your arm and that internal rotation of the shoulder, right? Um, the other side is it, it really tends to create late hips, which is what we don't want, right? We want those hips and legs underneath us we want that hip rotation first before the arm comes through. So if you think about it, this is the traditional way of screwball, not the way I like to throw it. I call it a screwball option, um, just so people know we're throwing this differently. Um, when they come in, this is the traditional way, we get here, you often see that arm beat the hip and get in front, and then we come through and we lag those hips behind. Young pitchers tend to have late hips. We have to train the core, strengthen the core, um, train that explosiveness and train that feel to get the lower half going first. Um, so if you naturally have late hips, yeah, you're naturally going to have that screwball, which we know is a fastball that tails in. Uh, so with that, I, I save it. I mean, nor most of the time for my screwball option that I teach is with my more advanced high school pitchers. I don't want my younger pitchers relying on a pitch that creates bad habits, that makes your other pitches slower and could potentially hurt you. So I need a pitcher that has the fastball mechanics down, um, is very sound with that, you know, body awareness, mind-body connection, so they can make adjustments easily with their, their hand and these small mechanics, um, and understands what we're doing with this pitch. So we'll get into more of like how to develop different pitches and when. I am not the type of instructor that's gonna teach a 10-year-old seven different pitches. 
it's, it's just not helpful. It doesn't make you better. <laughs> not, not to me. That's my opinion. Um, and a lot, and you know, some of you guys may disagree with this as well, this screwball opinion. But again, this is what I've seen. This is how I teach. Um, I, I'm not going to teach you something that's going to hurt you. Um, and I'm not going to back a pitch that we could throw a different way. Um, if we learn a, a fastball with 12-6 spin, that's way more effective in general, long term, my gosh, than a fastball that doesn't break, spinning like this, going in at the corner. Um, there's just other ways to do it. So I'm always into being creative and, and doing things the safest way possible. Um, so, so this is what, for that option, right? Um, why can't we produce that fastball um, with downward movement, my gosh, that tails in or away from a lefty? Do maybe a two seam fastball with the 12 6 spin, and maybe we set up more at an angle and come in this way. But my elbow and my arm is still internally rotating, still coming at that plate, and I'm slightly angled in just a little bit to get that tail on the fastball. Um, that two seam spin will fall out of its spin a little easier than a four seam and it can like move a little more, do a little bit more cool stuff. Um, for me, it, it doesn't make a huge difference unless we're throwing at least 55 miles an hour and up. Um, so girls underneath that, we're just sticking to four seam. That's just more accurate. And when a four seam is moving, you can see the spin a little bit better. And I want my girls to know spin inside and out no matter if they're catching a ball in from center field or they're watching their pitch come in in a bullpen or a game, they know the spin, they can see it, right? If the dot or the axis is coming in at you or a batter sees it and can hit it, that ball is not moving. That's a 0% spin efficiency. Um, you guys probably will have questions about this. I know there are some pitchers that love their screwball and I have to be very careful when I talk to them about this because I don't want them walking away, you know, with their confidence smashed. That's never, ever my intention. But I do, I do want to educate. Um, that is part of my job and I will keep doing it for sure. You cannot argue the data. You just can't. So let me know if you have questions. Uh, I would be very interested to hear. Good luck out there. Keep working, training hard. And uh, yeah, I'll put some links and stuff in our description about Rapsodo. Um, we'll do another video, more information on that, and some of the other cool stuff we've got going on at Be Complete Athletics. So thanks so much. Bye.